Today we are introducing an update to the emergency order that no temporary foreign workers will be permitted to enter New, New Brunswick. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wolo. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I talk about life in Canada and immigrating to Canada. So if this is the first time you are seeing me or any of my videos, I want to say thank you to you and request that you click on the subscribe button and the notification bell and give me a thumbs up. You know, there's something about the algorithm. They say once you do plenty thumbs up, it will push the videos out. So guys, I'm begging you people, please thumbs up. Do give me thumbs up. <laughs> Anyway, I like to be goofy because, I mean, there's so much happening around the world. You just have to find something to make you happy. And um, unfortunately, I want to bring, would I say a sad news? I don't know whether it's a sad news, but it's something that just was just announced last week. And that is for temporary foreign workers um, being banned from coming to New Brunswick. I said New Brunswick, I didn't say Canada. Temporary foreign workers being banned from entering New Brunswick because of what is happening and because of um, the unemployment levels in New Brunswick. So you must have seen part of the video and I'll be showing you the remaining part of the video and then I will talk more about it. This change will not affect the status of any temporary foreign workers who, who, is, who are already in New Brunswick. Under normal circumstances, we welcome foreign temporary workers in our province. They play an important role in New Brunswick's continued economic growth. But right now, the risk of allowing more people to enter the province is simply too great. I spoke with Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland about this just last night. I appreciated her quick response to my request for a meeting and her willingness to hear my concerns. We are in a good position in New Brunswick. We've worked hard, and so far we have been very successful in containing, containing COVID-19. I am committed to keeping it that way, and I won't apologize for protecting New Brunswickers. I explained to the Deputy Prime Minister that we have approximately 1,500 temporary foreign workers in New Brunswick right now. Like the rest of our population, many are unemployed at this time. I've asked for the flexibility to be able to offer them jobs in different areas of the province, including seafood processing plants, and she's committed to looking into that very quickly. We also spoke about the lobster season, including the current low prices and the market conditions. It's important to protect our food supply and our supply chain from coast to coast. We know these plants need to keep operating and we know they want to do it safely. We are committed to working with our processing plants. We know they have a core workforce that can support opening at various capacities. If the seafood industry or our agricultural industry needs more workers, I am counting on New Brunswickers to answer the call to ensure businesses that need workers will have them. We all need to do our part right now to keep our province safe. safe. So that's the video of the Premier of New Brunswick um, talking about a temporary ban on foreign workers coming to work in New Brunswick during this period. And these workers are basically essential workers to keep the food supply chain going. Um, and there are farmers who have actually made arrangements for these workers to come to Canada during this period for planting season and harvesting season and um, a lot of things that has to do with farming so that the food supply chain can continue. So with this ban now, what the Premier is trying to do is that people who are already living in New Brunswick who do not have jobs can actually apply for jobs in the farming industry in New Brunswick. But most of the farmers are against it. They are arguing that the people who are in New Brunswick are really not interested in doing those kind of jobs. So that's the situation you find in Canada where people, temporary foreign workers actually come to work in Canada because there are some jobs that some people are not willing to do. And the employers have no choice but to look for workers outside of Canada to come and do these jobs. And one of the farmer was so frustrated that he tried hiring workers in New Brunswick since last year, November, and was only able to hire two. And the reason he gave was that 
the people who have been working in his farm, they've been coming year in, year out and are well trained. They understand the farming system. They understand how to operate the machines. And it's going to take a longer time to train new people to start learning um, how to farm and how to use the machines to farm, especially when they are not really interested in that kind of job. So they have that argument there and they are in discussion with the premier of New Brunswick to see how that ban can be relaxed so that temporary foreign workers can come into Canada. Already, Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia have already made arrangements for more farmers and seafood production workers to come from Mexico and Jamaica and they are planning to come sometime during this week or next week. Unfortunately for New Brunswick, they cannot bring in any temporary foreign worker. So that's the current situation now for New Brunswick. Anybody who is trying to apply for farming jobs in New Brunswick, you have the news now. It's going to be very difficult for an employer in New Brunswick, a farming employer to employ anybody and bring the person from outside of Canada. And of course, like I mentioned in one of my videos, the government of Canada has an agreement with some of these countries like Mexico, Jamaica and Guatemala and they have agreement of bringing temporary foreign workers to come and work in the farming industry, seafood production industry and some other industries, greenhouse farming and all that to work in Canada. I, I think I did a video about it where I talked about it but what I didn't talk about was the agri-immigration pilot and the agri-immigration pilot is going to be launched May 15th, 2020, as according to the Government of Canada website, they stated they are going to paste it so that you see it where they stated that because of COVID-19, they had to shift um, the launching from March to May. So it is set to reopen May 15, 2020. And in one of my subsequent videos, I'll be talking about the agri-immigration pilot and all the requirements concerning that pilot. And somebody actually sent me an email asking me if there is no way to immigrate to Canada without ILTS. And I'm just thinking, like, I've talked about this over and over and over and over again. You can actually come to Canada and be working and doing all sorts. But when it comes to becoming a permanent resident, you need to write IELTS. You need to have evaluated your credentials. Those are major requirements when it comes to becoming a permanent resident in Canada. So... Hopefully sometime this week or next week, I'll talk about the agri-immigration pilot right before it launches. The major criteria and the major factor is getting a job offer, a one-year full-time job offer and a Canadian experience, a one-year Canadian experience. Those are the two major criteria. So if you do not have those two criteria, it becomes very difficult applying for permanent residency through the agri-immigration pilot. But I'll be talking about it in details so that you get to know about it. Although I've posted some things on my Canada Info Hub IG page. And if you have not subscribed or if you're not following the IG page, you might be missing out on a lot of information there. Uh, because it's fast to quickly post there. Then creating video, editing, uploading it takes a lot of time. So most times, once this information just comes, I just post it on the IG page. So please follow the Canada Info Hub IG page and stay updated. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.